Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings and welcome to the second installment of the Metropolitan Museum of Manila's online studio. This November, we join in the celebration of the National Children's Month and the Philippine Book Development Month. So today we are very excited to have Ms. Lisa Flores with us, an award-winning children's book illustrator and author to lead our paper cutting workshop for children. She will also be sharing with us the behind the scenes of the publication of her children's book, Ang Maliit na Kalabaw, which was recently named one of the best reads of a recent six National Children's Book Awards. We hope that this session will continue to inspire everyone to keep making art and ignite the passion of future book illustrators and storytellers. And to begin, I would like to turn over the floor now to the museum's curatorial team led by Ms. Alec Abaro. Thank you for the warm welcome, Christina. I'd like to say hello to my teammates who will be interacting with everyone today. Nikki Villanueva, the head of our event, and Jasmine Morales. So hi, Nikki. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Alec. It's great to be here, and I'm really excited for the event. So without further ado, let me introduce our speaker and facilitator for today's event. So Liza Flores is one of the leading children's book illustrators in the Philippines. She has won the National Children's Book Award for The Secret is in the Soil in 2012 and Ang Maliit na Kalabaw in 2021. She has mentored illustrators from different countries through Room to Read, an international nonprofit organization. Recently, Liza also wrote and illustrated the children's book Sungit in 2020. Liza is also a professional designer and runs a design and illustration studio in Manila. She designed Karapat Dapat in 2018, which was included in the White Ravens list for 2020, a selection by the International Youth Library of notable children's books around the world. Liza is a member of Ang Ilustrador ng Kabataan, or Ang Inc., the Philippines' first and only organization of illustrators for children. So let's all welcome Teacher Liza. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So how's everyone today? I'm doing great. I've been chatting with some of our participants a while ago, just saying hi and hello. And I'm so excited to see all the art they'll be making today. Same with me. I'm excited to, to do some paper cutting with everybody. <laughs> all right. So let's also meet the children this afternoon. So we see a lot of children in our, in our screens today. So children, you can introduce yourself by saying your name, your age, and sharing with us what was the last book you read. For those joining us in Zoom, you can use the raise hand button, and then we'll call you to turn on your video and audio. For those on Facebook, you can type your answers in the comment section and we'll read them. So maybe if you'd like to introduce yourself, you can use the raise hand button and then we'll ask you to turn on your audio. So we see a lot of children here today. Who wants to try introducing themselves? Oh. You can use the raise hand button. Oh, yeah. There, I think Santiago. Yes, you can turn on your audio. Okay, you can see. Okay. <laughs> Introduce ah, yourself. Yeah. Hi, Santiago. Hello. Hi. Hello. How old are you? 10. 10 years old. And what was the last book you read? Mm, Lego Ninjago. Oh, all right. So thank you for sharing. I see Trisha also raising her hand. Yes, Trisha? Hi, I, my name is Trisha. I'm nine years old. I'm from CFA. I'm, I'm from school. And what was the last book you read, Trisha? I think the 
ang mahiwagang buhok ni Raquel from Adorna Books. Okay, thank you, Tricia. I see, yes, Amelia Isabel. You can uh, turn on your audio. My name is Amelia Isabel. Um, I'm nine years old, and the last book that I read was The Lion of Mars. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for sharing your answers. Yes, JP. Ito ka, Hello. Hi. Pio. And the last book I read was about Air Force. Oh, about the Air Force. That's interesting. So let's see. Maybe we can call on maybe two more children with us. Who wants to introduce themselves? So, oh, I see, I see Ryan. Yes, Ryan. I am Ryan. I am Ryan. I am seven years old. That and the book that I read last and the last book that I read is Ang Matalinong Matsing at Buaya. <laughs> Wow, thank you for sharing your answers. Maybe we can call on one more um, participant that we have. So let's see who else. So let's take a look who else are raising their hands. I see Tan, Tan Lauren. Hello, T. <laughs> Hello, oh, everyone. Yeah. My name is Lauren Lee Castillo Tan, and I'm nine years old. I, I'm from Ormoc, Leyte. Oh, Ormoc City, Leyte. Mm -hmm. And this is my younger sister, Louise. Hi. Hello, girl. So, what was the last book that you read? Hello, but I'm Louise. Oh, hi, Louise. Body parts. Oh, how about Louise? What's the last book you read? Or you can't remember anymore. Little pigs. Three little pigs. Oh, three little pigs. That's a classic. Thank you for sharing your answers. Okay, I think. Okay, I think we can call one more. One more. Yes, Savior. I am Savior Jerry. No, 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 your video. Oh. Hi. Oh, hi, my boys. I am eight years old. The last book I read was Robinson Crusoe. Uh, same book. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Who's the one beside you? Uh, I'm Nicola Sebastian Eager. Oh, hi, Nicholas. It's great to meet you today. All right. So, Thank you, everyone, for sharing your answers and introducing yourselves. Later, we will be making two outputs. We'll make a My Self Portrait Mask and My Book Cover. Make sure to prepare as many pieces of paper you need so that you won't run out. We'll be asking Zoom participants to show their creations through the video so we can also give you more tips. And then you can always ask questions in the chat box. And then we'll gladly answer them for you. So we encourage everyone to share what's on your mind, but to ensure we are engaging with each other respectfully and so that we have a safe space here. Um, let's keep in mind the community guidelines we see in our screens. So there. So we recognize that everyone, it takes courage to share what we have in mind, to share our thoughts. We acknowledge we are speaking from our own perspectives and that others can engage with what we say. So let's go on to our next there. And then when we exchange ideas, we listen to each other with an open mind. We'll be compassionate to each other. And we also acknowledge all forms of exchanges, positive and negative, and use them as a learning opportunity. So those are our community guidelines. And now I think we're ready to start with a game. So we'll have our icebreak so that we can all loosen up first. So let me share with you 
our game today. All right, does everyone see our game today? Okay. So a while ago, we asked you to think of Filipino names of colors. So this is the time to try out our guesses. We're going to play Word Scrabble. Huhulaan natin ang mga pangalan ng mga kulay sa Filipino. All right, here are our game mechanics. To guess the word, unscramble the letters you will see in the screen. You have 15 to 30 seconds to make your guesses. So you can use the raise hand button to answer, and we will call you to turn on your audio. If you're shy, that's all right. You can type in your answers in the chat box. Once the time is up, we will show you the answers. Sure, Nikki will also be giving you clues in case certain words are very difficult. Yes. Even I had, even <laughs> I had difficulty guessing. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be giving hints here and there if if we need them. All right. So handa na ba kayo ng lahat para sa ating palaro? So you can um put your thumbs up if you're ready. So I think we're all ready. Ang una nating Kulay. Meron kayong labing limang segundo para ayusin ang mga letra. So ano kaya yan? So you can put in the chat box your answers. Oh, I think Andrea and Rafael already guessed oh, it. Oh, good job. So 13, 14, and 15. Ang sagot ay pula. And at ito ay Red, red in English. Yeah. Okay, so that was an easy graph. Yes. I think a lot of people in the chat um, got it right. So ito pa ang mga what are ibang. These... Ah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was about to ask, what is this yeah. word? Mabaya. Yan, mabaya. So ito pa ang mga ibang pangalan ng pula. Ito rin ay tinatawag na Mabaya, galing sa mga tao na ibatana na sa batane. So it's also called Mabaya. Teacher Alec, would you like to add um, something else? So as we all know, in our country, we have many, many languages, not only Tagalog. So uh, it's really amazing how many words we have uh, for to say the same thing. So go ahead. Bernie. Okay. Punta na tayo sa susunod na kulay. Let's go to the next color. So you have 15 seconds, labing limang segundo. Bilis. <laughs> so 10 seconds. 13, 14, and 15. Ang sagot ay dilaw. So ayan, nakikita mo, maraming ang nakakasagot sa chat box. So ito ay yellow sa English. Tignan natin ang mga iba pang pangalan ng dilaw. So ito ay pwede ding tawagin kanario na mula sa, sa salitang kanario na Espanyol. From the Spanish word kanario. Alright, let's go to the next color. So ulit, labing limang segundo or 15 seconds. So ano kaya ito? Oh, ang bilis din. <laughs> <laughs> 10 seconds. 13, 14, and 15. Ayan, nakikita ko na din sa chat box. Ito ay kahel or orange in English. So, ito pa ang mga iba niyang pangalan. Pwede rin siyang tawin kulay dalandan. Na yung, yung prutas na na, be, na berde sa labas, tapos kulay kahel sa loob naman. So, it's the Filipino fruit dalandan. O, tinatawag din ito, naranha. Mula sa Espanyol na salita na naranha. Okay, let's go on to our next color. Ito, ano kaya ito? Labing limang segundo ulit, 15 seconds to 
Guess your answers. Mabilis ha. Mabilis. Kala <laughs> <laughs> namin mahira. O nga, madali lang pala. <laughs> 10, 11. So kung point. napansin nyo, marami din mga salita na nakalagay doon, uh, Spanish. So uh, as we interact with many other cultures and languages, marami tayo nagkakaroon na loan words. So kung mara yung mga lamesa, kadila, parang Tagalog na rin. Oo, Sylvia. Ayan. So, ang sagot ay bughaw. At parang yung sinasabi ni Teacher Alec, mga hiram na salita. Azul. Mula sa, sa salitang azul na Espanyol. The Spanish word azul. Okay, let's go on to our next color. Ito, ano kaya ito? So, 15 seconds to make some guesses. Ito ay nagsisimula, nagsisimula sa tundog na O. Oh. It begins with O. Oh. Ano kaya yun? O. Oh. Eh, may nakita na ako sa chat box. Okay. So, ang sagot ay lunti. Ito ay green sa ingles. Ito yung lunti. Marami po siyang mga pangalan din. Pwede siyang lunti, lungtian, o Berde. So, makikita nyo yung mga anong ibig sabihin ng mga salita. Ito naman ang sunod na kulay. So, 15 seconds again. Ayun, nakita ko na din sa chat box. So, 8, 10, Okay, ang sagot ay itim, tama o black. So ito ang mga iba pang pangalan ng itim. So meron tayo ng kapampangan at cebuano. So thank you for sharing, Chesha. Ito naman, anong kulay ito? 15 seconds again. Bilis, walang hiya. <laughs> Opo, oh, ang bilis. Okay, tama. Lila o violet sa ingles. So ito rin ay minsan tinatawag kulay ube. Parang yung pagkain natin, the purple yam. Ayan. Sunod naman ako. Ito, mahaba-haba na to. So ano kaya ito? So this time you have 30 seconds to make your guesses. So, ay nagsisimula sa, sa tunog na mmm. It begins with the sound mmm. Ano kaya ito? Mmm. Ma. Ma. O oh, kailangan yata ng third letter din. <laughs> Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> and 30 seconds is up. Ang sagot ay mala maya o ayan, gray sa English. Nakita ko si Ryan, nahula niya yung sagot. So mula sa dalawang salita, mala, like, like, and maya, the bird that has grayish and brownish feathers. So ito rin ay tinatawag kulay abo o abuhin. The Filipino word for ash. Okay, ito din. Mahaba din ulit. So ano kaya ito? You have 30 seconds. Tatlong pong segundo. Karaniwang sinasabi na ito daw ang kulay ng balat ng mga Pilipino. Ayun, nakikita ko na din sa chat box. So, 8, 20 seconds. Okay, last 5 seconds. Ayan. I think a lot know, a lot of you know the answer. Ito ay kayumanggi o brown sa English. Chocolates. Opo. Tinatawag din ito kulay chocolate or chocolate. Just like the English word chocolate. 
I love Maron in Spanish. Ay, ala. Ayan, ayan. Ito ang I ating... chocolate din. <laughs> Ito ang ating huling kulay. You have 30 seconds. So, ano kaya ito? Ito naman ay nagsisimula sa sa tunog na k. Ka. Ka. Ano kaya ito? Kalim. Ano kulay kaya ito? Last 10 seconds. Kalim. Hmm. Okay. Ito, mukhang bagong salita ito para sa ating mga uh, bata, para sa mga bata ngayon. Ito ay kalimbahin o pink sa Ingles. Ito rin ay tinatawag na kulay rosas o from the English word rose. Ayan. So, salamat sa pakikipaglaro. So I hope, we hope that you enjoyed playing the game and that it got you excited for our activities this afternoon. Now let's have our museum tour. As always, remember that we would love to hear your comments and reactions in the Zoom chat and the Facebook comments section. So did you know that we have a 3D capture of the exhibition, you can use you can use this to see many of the artworks in the museum. You can literally zoom in and feel like you are walking along the hallways and going from room to room. We'll share you the link later so you can explore the exhibition too. Today, we'll use this 3D capture to zoom in on three artworks. So there's so. That's how the museum looks like. All right, so maybe we can now go to our first artwork. So, so right now, we're walking. <laughs> walking to our first artwork. So as you can see, there's so many to see here. But since we have limited time, we'll only look at three. Here's our first one. Okay, so let's observe the painting's details. What can you see? So you can, again, put your answers in the chat box. So what can you see in the painting? Fish. Fishes, uh-huh. What else? I'm not sure what is that. I guess the sun. The sun, okay. That's all I can see. Oh, so I know. Mm-hmm. I can see some blurred the corals. Mm, you're right. So you're right. So we see fishes swimming to and fro. Colorful fishes making curve and spiral patterns when they go swimming. And someone mentioned the coral reef. You're right. So there's healthy and colorful coral reefs in the painting. So the sea has a glowing light that further accentuates its beauty. So let me tell you the title of this painting. It's called Graces from the Sea by Manuel Valdemar. So how is the title related to how the artist sees the ocean or the seas? When we hear the word grace, what does it mean? What's grace? Grace is blessing from, from God. Yes, grace is a blessing. What else? What else can grace mean? So let's see what's so the chat. Grace. Abundance. Abundance. So those are good ideas. So grace here is like, besides abundance, besides blessing, it can mean like the graceful movements of dancers. Because like, dancers the fishes are dancing in the sea they are coordinated they move in harmony with each other and the sea so there's beauty in the way they move and how they live in the sea as well so the sea and the fishes 
they make each other healthy. They live together in balance. And someone also said that it's abundance o biyaya sa Pilipino. So I'd like to ask you, have you seen a video or documentaries about the coral reefs, about fishes, or about underwater scenes? Have you seen movies about it? Yes, definitely. Oh, oh yeah. So what? Uh, yes. So I see some raising their hats. Uh, yes, Amelia. Uh, uh, finding Dory. Oh, yes, that can be on Finding Dory. Finding That's all. Finding what else? Nemo. Finding Nemo. Oh, what's your question? What uh, movies or documentaries have you seen that shows the beauty of the sea, of the oceans? National Geographic Channel. National Geographic, yes. That's very to the point. So in those movies, in those documentaries, are they all beautiful? Do you think all of them looks this colorful and full of life, just like what we see in the painting? Yes. 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 So, oh, that's good if, if all of them show beautiful oceans. But you know what? There are some documentaries, some moves that show what is happening to our oceans. What's, um, how, what is happening to our oceans in terms of global warming, coral bleaching. Do you know what coral bleaching means? What does that mean, coral bleaching? Yes, Amelia, I see you raising your hand. You can turn on your audio. I, about the hand, I just forgot to look. Oh, it. okay, I all right. What does coral fishing mean? Death of coral. So coral beaching happens when the water is too hot, when, the, when our surroundings is too hot. So the corals release what's inside them that gives them color. So when it's too right. hot, the corals become, yes, they become white. They, they lose their colors. And then have you also heard of some fishing practices that you've heard of from, let's say, a movies again? Yes, I've heard of it. So what um, fishing practices do you know? That dynamite are, fishing. Yes, like dynamite yeah. fishing when they use the explosives. Poster. You're right. So these are the things that's happening sometimes or most of the times in our ocean. Using rest. nets. Oh, yes, using nets. And sometimes nets, fishermen, to be safe, fishermen use nets with bigger holes so that little fishes can escape from it so that they can still stay in the oceans. So all these, all these um, bad things happening to the oceans like global warming, we also experience it. So it's not only the fishes, it's not only the oceans, but us too. Like right now, you, you usually feel warm and hot. Do you feel that feeling also? That it's really, yes, because it's also happening to us, it's also happening to our environment. <laughs> it's true, yes, it is hot. And it's getting hot because there's climate change as well. So the, so, the oceans are not the only ones feeling this climate change, but us as well. Yeah. So if you see the painting, it yes, says Graces. From... <laughs> oh, I've heard of that. In yes, so me too. If you, can, if you go back to the painting again, it, the title itself means Graces from the Sea, Biyaya ng Dagat. And the artist Manuel Baldemore just painted this imagine two years ago, uh, inspired by his tra travels to Palawan and his you know, diving uh, underwater. So it really tells us how abundant our nature is, how blessed our seas are. Go ahead, Shirley. Okay, so I think we can go now to our next painting 
or next painting, I'd like to teleport instead. <laughs> <laughs> so this one looks a bit different. Unlike the previous painting, this one doesn't look like anything we find in real life. That's why we call it abstract art. And we find that some abstract artworks, especially this kind, can be an excellent way to take a look at emotions. So this painting's title is A Woman's Life in Six Acts by Felis Zabaliero. So there are six scrolls that make the painting look like it's made up of different parts. So do you see the lines in the, in the painting? So those are the different scrolls of the painting. But as you can see, these six different parts are connected and they form a giant painting as big as a wall. So it's a colorful painting, right? So I see in the chat box, yeah. It's very expressive. So yeah, Trisha said it's fun to paint. So imagine how did the artist paint this? Do you think she used a paintbrush? Like dipping it in a paint? putting it in the canvas. How do you think the artist made this? Yes, the fingerprint? Or, yeah, both. Yeah, possible. Or imagine, yeah, splattering the paint can. Exactly. I think that's what I mean, the bathroom. I splash water on the wall. Yeah. Okay, so it's like uh, uh -huh. God is uh, sending colored clouds. So. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a nice idea. So maybe we can try to pick one color and follow that color's journey in the canvas and how it interacts with other colors. What does it say to you? So maybe you can try following green. Try following the red or the yellow, or even the blacks, the violets, ang mga kulay pula, kulay lila. Lots of the colors represent something. You're right. So they can represent something, you're right. So going back to the painting's title, it's like the artist is asking us to look at this painting as if it were a book. But instead of words, we have colors. And as the title suggests, it's about a person's life. So let's think about the people surrounding us. Our mothers, grandmothers, sisters, our family, our fathers, brothers, and even our friends. We all are at different points in our lives. Just like how we follow one color. They're all in different parts of the painting. So we also have, feel different emotions in our lives, positive and negative ones, right? And sometimes we don't really show all our emotions to everybody. So just think, your life is colorful and vibrant as this painting, and so is everyone else's. All those people you think about, inside them, it's like a painting. So like you, you have a painting inside you, experiencing all these colors. Your mom has this painting that has maybe different colors with the colors that you have. Or your sister, your brother, your dad, they have different paintings in each of them that can be different from the colors that you have as well. So that means we are full of emotions. So people don't readily show what they're going through. So now, even if we do not really know everything, how then do we treat people? How do we treat people when we don't know what, how they're feeling? Should we be, when we don't know how they're feeling, should we be rude to them? Should we be kind to them? What do you think? So you, you can think about that. So how can we be kind to people? Kind. So I see some. So I'm reading right now the text in our chat. It's best to be kind because you just can't 
assume what uh, emotions they're on right now. You're right. So thank you for that, Nigel. Thank you for that answer. Yeah. So you're right. And just to add to that, too, if you notice the colors here, they don't exist separately. Uh, they splash into one another and then they interact and mix and layer on each other. So even our real feelings and emotions, we don't only experience one thing at a time, but many things at the same time. So I'll just give you a few more moments to look at the painting at its entirety. And then maybe we'll go to the next one. So maybe I'll give you maybe five counts. So when we send you the link, you can go back to this painting and then look at it some more and perhaps even make your own color field yeah. of what you think best expresses your life. Okay, all right. I think we can go to our next artwork. So this time, it's again a different kind of artwork. We're going to see a sculpture now. So let's just walk a bit to go to our next artwork. All right, so this is our sculpture. The title of this work is Feature Number Three with Two Messengers by Dudley Diaz. Can you guess what is what it is made of? What's the material? Probably clay. Terracotta? Clay, terracotta. Well, it's terracotta. Yeah. And is it just one material? No. <laughs> So a clue is it's a combination of two materials. Which two materials do you think the artist used? It looks so, like wood and clay. So let's reveal it, teacher Nikki. It's wood and oh acrylic God. paint. So the artist used paint to paint the wood. The, the form of the sculpture. Okay, so there. So makes sense. Yeah. So what does preacher mean from the title? Who is the preacher in the sculpture? What's a preacher? What does he or she do? Yes. What was that? Someone who preaches. Someone who preaches. But what? But what's what does it mean to preach as well? A, a priest. So a preacher is someone who delivers sermons or religious addresses to the public. Someone who proclaims religious preaching. So one of you said that um, it's related to priests because you're right. Priests also says some preaches as their sermons in church as well. But this one, our preacher here is, what do you think our preacher is? Can you make some guesses? She is a pregnant woman. Her body is fertile, like the like our earth. So that means if you it's fertile, it's again abundant with blessings, just like the first painting we saw. Her face is calm and serene, like the Santos that uh, maybe we have in our homes or the Santos that we see in the church as well. Sometimes they're depicted as crying or suffering. But our preacher here is calm. She's someone you can approach for comfort and guidance. She's very approachable. She looks humble and her position is telling you, I'm ready to listen. It's very maternal, mother-like. So I see that there are already some of you noticing her um, who is accompanying our preacher? She's not alone. So besides her, we see two small creatures. So you already guessed that we have owls. Yeah, owls or sa Tagalog, kuwago, mga kuwago. In Filipino folk beliefs, owls are one of the animals 
observed for omens. They are symbols of wisdom and are sacred animals of the Greek goddess of wisdom, Athena. So again, abundance of blessings, abundance of knowledge, abundance of guidance. And they also look like the preacher. They reflect each other's character. So preachers and religion usually center on the question of how to live in this world and how we should treat each other. So if the sculpture could talk of our preacher and if the owls can talk, what do you think they'll say? What will the owl tell us? What, um, what are the teachings it will tell us, say to us? If she's someone who preaches religious um, sayings. Because in religion, they tell us to treat each other well. How can we treat each other well? What are some things that maybe your teacher said, your mom said about treating each other well? Maybe we can be kind by helping each other. Be kind and smile. Yes, thank you for that. So yes, one of the things that we can do is to have a smile in our face. It can brighten um, anyone today by being uh, kind and approachable. So being respectful and being understanding as well, being understanding of the people around us, being patient with them as well. So I see be generous. Yes, be generous. And another one is to be humble. Uh -huh. And one more yeah, thing. Also, go ahead, Teacher Ale. Uh, yeah, and speaking of being humble, if you look at this sculpture, it's just made of very humble materials. It's just wood. And, you know, she's not sitting on a fancy throne. It's just like a regular chair, not even a chair. It looks like just a stool. So she has that aura that the artist um, intentionally made her have. Yeah. All right, so, so those are our three artworks for today's tour. So we've taken a look at nature's beauty and harmony and how we have so much power to affect this balance. In the second painting, we look inwards to our emotions and also thought about the rich in their lives of other people so, so that we don't know about. In the sculpture, we know that one of the most important things we need to know so we can all live well together is how to treat and take care of each other and also how to take care of the world. So the simplest acts of kindness can make anyone's day. So let's see what simple acts of kindness we can do to our story, Ang Maliit Na Kalabaw. So let me just share my screen again. <laughs> so, all right, so, I will, so there's a lot of you um, participating in the chat box. Dahil Filipino ang ating kwento, tayo ay magsaslita ng Filipino din. Pero wag mag-alala dahil isasalan din natin ito sa English. Since the story is in Filipino, we're going to speak in Filipino as well. But don't worry, we're going to have English translation so we can all follow along. If it's difficult to speak in Filipino, we can speak in English as well. So subukan natin na magsalita sa Filipino. Punta tayo sa unang pahina ng ating libro. Ang kwento natin ay pinamagatang Ang Maliit na Kalabaw. Ito ay guhit ni Liza Flores at ito ay inalathala ng Adarna House. So it's illustrated by Liza Flores and published by Adarna House. Ano ang kalabaw? Saan ma sila madalas nakikita? So what's a carabao? Where do you usually see a carabao? In farms, usually, yes. Our family farm was 
my grandparents were raised in a farm. So yeah, we sometimes see carabaos. Yeah, so we usually see carabaos in farms. So they help our farmers to plant different crops. So as we go through the pages, we'll see the colors as well, the different colors that we talked mm -hmm. about. So if you remember their Filipino names, you can type them in the chat box as well. So let's go to the first page, ang unang pahina ng ating libro. Ang maliit na kalabaw ay marunong pumila. The little carabao knows how to fall in line. Bakit kaya may bandarita sa larawan? When do we see banderitas? Yes. What's that? So we see yes. little triangles there, right? Those are banderitas. They sabi ni Amelia sa mga fiesta. So we see banderitas in a fiesta. So, uh, as, uh, sorry, just to add, then if you know in fiestas, uh, in many of our uh, cities, people also dress up. So here, take a look at how the kalabaw is dressed up here. Go ahead, Trudy. <laughs> yeah, so they have like little costumes that they're wearing. So why do we need to fall in line? In what situations do we fall in line? Just like the little carabao. Bakit natin kailangan pumila? Maybe when in school, what does your teacher tell you to do before? <laughs> Oh, to line up. To line up. <laughs> yes, to line up. So it's important to line up so that um, we're orderly, so that everyone's safe. So just like the little carabao here, he's following the line. So, so all the carabaos are in order. Okay, now let's go to the next page. Ang maliit na kalabo ay nagsasabi ng Makikiraan po. The little carbon knows how to wait for its turn. So why is it important to take to 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 say? Oh, this one is the little carbon saying, "Excuse me, I'm sorry." Makikiraan po. So why is it important to say, "Excuse me"? Yes. So or, or when do we say excuse me? Or when someone's talking to you and then you want to say something, we say excuse me so that we can show respect. You're right, JP. So it's one way of showing respect. Well, when we pass by, you're right. So we say excuse me when, it, when we pass by. To be polite, you're right. Okay, so thank you for your answer. So oh, we can and to and uh, if you want to appear, uh, uh -huh. like if you uh, appear and uh, someone's talking to someone, it's best to say excuse me if you want to talk to them. You're right. It's they, best to they say excuse. never expect you to be here. No, I see. But you're right. It's best to say, excuse me, when you want to talk to someone. All right. So let's go to our next page. So ito na. Dito naman ngayon, nagsasabi yung malit na kalabaw or marunong maghintay ang malit na kalabaw. Ang malit na kalabaw ay marunong maghintay sa nauna sa kanya. The little carabao knows how to Wait for its turn. What is the little carabao waiting for? What do you think? So for its turn to swim. Yes, for its turn to swim. So the little carabao knows how to wait for its turn. Like maybe when we wait for each other's turn with our brothers and sisters. Or maybe friends. in a restaurant, so we have to wait in the line. No? You're right. Right now, especially, we need to line up because there's a limited amount of people that can go inside the restaurant. 
um, let's say, the store. So we need to line up and wait for our turns. You're right. Let's go to or our... Turn uh -huh. to order. Or our turn to order. You're right. So let's go to our next page. Ang malit na kalabaw ay marunong magbahagi. The little carabao knows how to share. Ano ang binabahagi niya dito? What is the little carabao sharing? The sharing their food. The food, the grass, you're right. So do you share with, let's say, your friends, with your brothers, your sisters? Yes. What are the things that you usually share with each other? Maybe um, your toys? Do you share your toys? Or do you share... We share, we share our pillows in the night. So. Oh, you share pillows in the night. Maybe you take turns or share, uh, let's say, your computer, the tablets that you use. Especially now when we're um, in online school, maybe we share our tablets. Oh, you share food, yes. Food, toys, and school materials. Yes, um, Louise, thank you for raising your hand. I'm sharing my... I, me and my sister sharing and my toys. Oh, that's good. You share toys. How about what do you share with your parents? I share my iPad with my mother the time that she needs it for work. Oh, that's good. Anyone share, else? Yes? I share hugs and, and kisses and my mom and dad. Oh, that's so Aww. nice to hear. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. So I guess we can go to our next page. Ang sunod na pahina ng ating libro. Ang malik na kalabaw ay nagsasabi ng po at opo. The little carabao knows how to say po and opo. Sino ang nagsasabi ng po at opo dito? Who says po and opo? We say that to old people. And to be respectful. And to be respectful. So actually, we can say it to anyone if you want to show your respect. You can say it to, let's say, an elder, to someone you're working with. Yan, ako po nakikita ko sa chat box. So there. So saying po at opo is one way to show respect. Even to, to the people in, let's say, grocery stores, in restaurants, pwede tayong magsabi ng salamat po, opo. There. Now let's go to our next page. Ang malit na kalabaw ay marunong magsabi ng paumanhin po. The little carabao knows how to say sorry. Why? What happened here? He got into an accident and then accidentally... Uh, You're right. So there was an accident. The eggs from the basket or the bowls? Yes. Accident and... But she... Let me say sorry. You're right. So there was an accident. The eggs fell to the floor and he said sorry. But can I ask you, what does it mean to say sorry? When you say to sorry, apologize. you're right to apologize. When you say sorry, what do you mean by it? What does... Yes, yes. it's like sorry for doing this or that. I didn't mean to... Oh, thank you for that. Yes, Kylie, I saw you raising your hand. To try and not do it again. You're right. So when we say and to sorry, learn their lesson. And to learn that there's a lesson in our actions that we did. So you're right. So when we say sorry, we acknowledge what happened. The little Karaba acknowledged that, yes, it's an accident and that the eggs got broken. And he says sorry and he tries his best not to do it again. So saying sorry means acknowledging what happened and trying your best not to do it again. And if you look at the lady in this page, does she look mad? Do you think she accepted the Kalabaw's apology? 
Maybe she's surprised though. She does look surprised. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, Savior. Shock. Shock. You're right. So, so the lady looks surprised, shocked because of what happened. So again, the little Carabao apologized for it. So let's go to our next page. Ang malit na kalabaw ay marunong magpasalamat. The little Carabao knows how to say thank you. Bakit nagpapasalamat ang kalabaw? Why is the Carabao, Carabao saying thank you to the herons here? O sa Pilipino, mga tagak. Because the bird eat the her uh, chicks. Yes, the bird or the heron is eating the insects here. Right? I, I heard someone else. Would you like to share mm. your answer? They're thanking them for helping. Yes, so the little carbo is thanking the herons for helping him or her because the heron is eating the insects, right? So this one, this is a mutualistic relationship between the two animals where they help each other. So some ex uh -huh, yes. Would you like to share something? I their mutualism, yes. So it's when different species um get something in return to each other when they help each other. Yes, Nigella? Like right now, my mother gave me tissue and I have to say thank you. Oh, yes, just like what the little Carabao did a while ago. We, you, we say thank you. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give you some examples of mutualistic relationships. Uh, yes, Teacher Ale? Yeah. Uh, so if you've noticed, if both... Um, Features benefit from from it. It's called mutualism. So uh, the kalabaw gets rid of the insect, and then the tagak gets to have food. But what do you think is the relationship of the insect to the carabao? To her, though. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the I'm insect. Sick. Yeah, exactly. So the proper term the, for their relationship with the insect and the carabao is um, being enemies. <laughs> right? Uh it's uh, uh someone said it, it's uh parasitic, it's parasitism. So what happens is the insect gets all the food and then it does damage to the calabao. Anyway, go ahead, Trinity. So yeah, so I I am seeing in the comments that there is someone given an example of a mutualistic relationship, like ants protecting a tree from pests, and the ants get nectar from the tree. So something like that, you're right. Or bees and flowers, their their relationship is also mutualistic. All right, so let's go to our next page. Mabait ang maliit na kalabaw. The little carabao is kind. Sa larawang ito, paano natin nasabi na mabait ang kalabaw? Ano ang ginagawa niya? So in this picture, how can we say that the little carabao is kind? What are the things it's doing? Mm, he's, he's smelling flowers and they're, they're not uh, doing anything bad to it. So, as if he's like uh, protecting so, it. So. You're, uh -huh, you're right. So, just like the artworks that we saw a while ago, he's in some way appreciating nature, taking care of nature. So, let's read some of the comments here in the chat box. Because the little Caraba has manners, you're right. He knows how to say, thank you, excuse me. He knows how to share. He knows how to wait for others. You're right. He knows how to share and wait for others. So, ang pamagat ng kwento ay maliit na kalabaw. Sabihin natin kung siya ay lumaki. Ibig sabihin ba na hindi niya nagagawin ng mga lahat ng binanggit natin? 
So the title of the story is The Little Carabao. If the Carabao gets older, does it mean the Carabao will not do all the things he's been doing? Being kind, sharing, waiting for his turn. Actually, oh, if he uh, yes. keeps doing and uh, doing it uh, again and again, he'd uh, probably have it as a habit, uh, and then they could uh, be a very kind adult uh, when he grows up. So. You're right. So all these things that we're doing, we carry them until we grow older. Nadadala natin siya kapag tayo rin ay tumatanda. So even if we grow older, it's even more important that we know how to be courteous, to be kind, and to be respectful. Especially now that adults are having a really hard time and they have to be really respectful and really busy at the same time. Yes, if you notice, if adults are having a hard time, that's when you try to understand them and be patient, just like what we saw in, the, in one of our artworks a while ago. So let's go to the, the next page. So that yan ang wakas or the end of our story. So you see details here. And, and then let's go to our next page. Here's the back cover of the book. And if you notice. <laughs> Okay, so ngayon buwan, bukod sa pambansang buwan ng mga bata o National Children's Month, ipinagdiriwang din natin ang Philippine Book Development Month. So besides National Children's Month, we're also celebrating Book Development Month. Paano kaya binuo ang maliit na kalabaw at ang mga iba't ibang libro? How was ang maliit na kalabaw and other books made? Paano nga ba ginawa ang mga ilustrasyon upang tumagma sa Kwento. How are the illustrations made to match the story? Sila ba ay lumalabas lang mula sa hangin? Do they just come out from thin air? So tuklasan natin sa pamamagitan ng pakikinig sa ating tagapagsalita. Ang ilustrador ng librong pambata si Liza Flores. So let's find out by listening to the talk of children's book illustrator Liza Flores. Hello again. Excited na ba kayo? <laughs> Pero hindi pa tayo magpe-paper cutting. Magkakwento muna ako. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yes! Yes? Okay. Yes. Is it moving? Yes, Pa. Okay. So hello, I'm Liza. I illustrate children's books. So what we read earlier, Ang Maliit na Kalabaw, is one of my books. And I also drew all of these. Have, are any of these familiar? Have you read any of the books here? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I've seen Not some it. similar to it before. Okay. So when I draw uh, the pictures in a book, I use different um, coloring materials. For example, for Chenilin, Chenilin, I use watercolor and colored pencil. For ang mabait na kalabaw, I use acrylic paint. So unlike mali um, maliit na kalabaw that you saw earlier that's made of paper, this one is um, painted. I also use colored pencils, like for this one. This is Rosa Mystica. Um, if you look at the drawing and the colors, it looks like it was during an old period and old time, <laughs> not modern. So I wanted it to be all a bit brownish. So I use colored pencil for this. This is um, Sultan Saif. I use different kinds of paper for this one. Gift wrappers, Japanese paper, paper bags, um, different colored paper. Same with this one. This is handmade paper. And you could also see newspaper and magazines. 
sometimes I combine colored pencils with paper cutouts. So for if you, if you look at the trunk of the tree, the lines are a pencil. And then the leaves are uh, from a gift wrapper. Sometimes I paint the paper that I cut. So this one is for, but that won't wake me up and but that won't make me sleep. I painted the paper first and then cut them out and then assemble them to make this illustration. This is Kaya Kaya. Again, paper cut out. And if you notice, the artworks look a little 3D. We have shadows. And they they're not flat like like this one. They're on the needle one or the And my newest book is called Sungit. Kina san yung masungit minsan. Do you know what sungit means? No. No, it means grumpy. Uh, so this is a story okay. of a girl that woke up and she she felt grumpy that day. Grumpy not slaps. smiling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you copy her face? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You're really good at making facial expressions. So. Ah, thank you. Hold on. My slides are not working. That's okay. Uh, I noticed uh, many of our participants also said that. Oh, cool. <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. So how is a book made? A book, uh, uh, all books start with a story. So usually, because I'm an illustrator, um, usually I got the story in my email and then I print it out. So a story looks something like this. Sometimes a uh, writer tells me how many pages the book um, should be, and then I break down the story into pages. But for Ang Maliit na Kalabaw, the publisher and I put the story together. This was the first book I made with Adarna House, which is Ang Mabait na Kalabaw. So when they asked me if we could make another book, um, we decided that it should still be about being good. So we thought of words that are important for children and adults to remember. So these are magic words that we should always use. Like please, thank you, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> and then we should also always remember to have good manners, like sharing, taking turns, and lining up. So when we, once we had this outline, decided to put them into sentences. So at first, we just um, stayed with ang mabait na kalabaw ay marunong pumila, ang mabait na kalabaw ay marunong magbahagi, and so on. But then, we knew that it was going to be a smaller book. So we thought, let's just make the kalabaw small also and just call it things with mabait na kalabaw to maliit na kalabaw. So this was the story. So after the story, I have to do some research because I have to figure out how to draw a kalabaw. Yes, always find your references. So. Yes. So at first, I tried to draw it from memory. But then my drawing started to look like a cow and it started to look like a pig and not a carabao anymore. So I looked at other drawings and looked at how other illustrators um, drew the carabao. I also looked at paintings. So from here, I saw that there are many, many ways to draw a carabao. And I looked at photos of real carabao. Um, look at these three animals. Are these all carabaos? No, yes. one is some type of oh. one is tamarao. There's a tamarao. Oh, one is tamarao. Oh, my isang tamarao. Like this. The that one on top is a tamarao. Oh, How can you tell? We horn. Oh. 
The horns are in a different way, yeah. Yeah. Horns are the horns are just straight. So yeah, it's so straight nice. going there. So when you're it drawing, it's like very important to observe and try to figure yes. out how are things different. How to how do I make my carabao look like a carabao and not a tamara and not a buffalo, not a pig and not a <laughs> and not a, a cow. It's a uh... so that's when research is very important. I made character studies. I tried drawing a carabao with a big head. Then I tried drawing it with a small head but a big body. I tried to draw it um, looking like a real carabao, realistic. And then I tried drawing it with very simple shape. I think it still looks like a carabao, <laughs> even though it's very simple. So that's what I figure out when I tried drawing it in different ways that I didn't have to complicate it too much because the important part of the carabao are the horns. So as long as I get the horns correct, it will look like a carabao. So I do some more until I do something that I like. So this looks cute. So I'll do this one. This is like art style. Mm -hmm. So that's really how you figure out how to, uh, how, what type of art style you like it's by trying different things out. So this is the colored version of Mabait na Kalabaw. And then because I wanted to be a small carabao, I made the head bigger and the body smaller so that it looks like, uh, more like a baby. So this is the final Mabait na, ah, Maliit na Kalabaw character. The Next part is drawing thumbnails or storyboarding. Ah, yes, my favorite part. Mm -hmm. They're called why they are why are they called thumbnails? Do you know? Oh, thumbnails is the cover. Ah no, thumbnails oh, are really? very small drawings like thumbnails. <laughs> so actually, these are just these small drawings, and then I try to imagine what. I could draw for each page. So for the line, ang maliit sa kalabaw ay maroon ng pumila. Um, that reminded me of a fiesta where in carabaos had to fall in line. So this is one of the references I saw when I drew the carabao in a, in a line. Then another line from the book is, ang maliit sa kalabaw ay maroon ng magpasalamat. And I found these photos of the carabao with a egret or in, in Filipino, tagak. So when you see a field with a carabao, you'll always see them with, with these birds. So this is my sketch. And the last one is, ang malit na kalabao ay nasasabi ng paumanhin po. This is where the carabao broke some eggs. So by drawing some nail studies, I could lay them all together on one page and I can see how the whole um, book comes together, how my separate drawings look when they are lined up with each other. This is also essential in animating. Yes. Um, a good, um, one of the reasons why you make thumbnails is so you can plan out the whole book without getting too com without it getting too complicated. So you get to figure out what are the important parts of each spread or each page by drawing thumbnail studies. Then, once I have my thumbnails, the real, real work starts when I draw the final artwork. So the materials that I use for ang maliit, ang mabait na kalabaw, wait, ang maliit na kalabaw are paper, Paint, colored pencils, scissors, and glue. So again, I painted the paper. And the next um, pictures I'll show you is from another book, but this is also the same way I made Ang Maliit na Kalabaw. I started with simple shapes, like circles for the head and the eyes. 
and then a leaf shape um, for the hair, then a rectangle for the neck, and then more um, curved shape for the hair, and the shirt, the legs, arms, and the hands, and the dance. So this is the girls for this scene. Second series, I only use really very basic shapes to form one character and I do it again to make all the other characters. So that's how I did Maliit na Kalabaw also. But I wanted to use a different colored paper for each, for each page. So I chose a different color for every scene and started to cut out maraming kalabaw. <laughs> so this is my desk. You can see how messy it is when I start cutting. Do you remember this picture of the girl on the carabao na humikila, lining up? And this is the, the girl with a basket of eggs. So I use colored pencil to, to add um, the pattern on her dress and some colors for, for um, pink on her cheek. And this is the final version. And for the last page, this is the happy maliit na kalabaw with all the colors of different, the flowers with different colors. Ang mabait na ang mabait ang maliit na kalabaw. Then for the cover, I also made a study. I wanted the front of the cover to be the front of the carabao and the back of the cover to be the back of the carabao. So this is can you see me? So this is the actual um, cutout that I made for the cover. This is the front, and this is the back. And so the final product would assist. So each spread again is a different color. You see all the sketches that I made earlier in full color. And this is how the book looks. The end. We have questions. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so children, if you have questions, you can uh, use the raise hand button for us to call you. And then you can also type in your questions in the chat box. Um, for now, we have some questions that we, we, that we received in our registration. So. One of you okay. asked, um, Lauren asked, how did you start illustrating for books? Do you need to have a unique style of illustrating to be successful? Um, I started illustrating when I was in college. Um, I joined a group called Ang Ilisibar ng Kabataan or Inc. So I met other artists there. And I also met writers and publishers through, through Inc. So I was offered a book project and I said, yes, I wanted to illustrate a book. Um, do you need, a, a, what was the question? Do you need a style? Yes, do you need to have a unique style of illustrating to be successful? Um, I think it's important that you know how to tell stories with pictures more than, um, being worried about having your own style because I think that comes naturally when you draw and keep drawing and drawing however your drawing looks like that would that is your style so I think what uh, what I said earlier what's important is that you're able to tell stories with your pictures 
It could be, as you can see, my drawings are really very simple. I, I bet you could all copy how I draw because they are really very simple shapes. So the imagination and how to um, tell stories with basic shapes is, I think, more important than, than being worried about your style. Thank you, uh, teacher Eliza. Mm -hmm. So we have a question from Trisha. Was making the project hard? How long did it take? Well, it takes a long time. I usually um, work on a book for maybe two months, including research and um, making studies and then showing it to the publisher. So it takes, it takes a while, but it's I wouldn't say that it's difficult because I enjoy the, the process. Yeah. So when it comes to illustrating books, we could say that it's not just about actually making the work, but it's also knowing more about it, researching about it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I hope uh, the children got to see that as well. So maybe we, we can do one more question. We have a question from Crystal. What techniques can you share to make my drawings more lively? Oh, there are so many different ways. I think um, a good way to learn is to look at other people's work, um, look at other books, look at paintings. And when you look at it, try to figure out why you like it. Did you like the colors? Did you like how they use lines? Did you like the shape? So, Ask yourself, when you look at something that you like, ask yourself why you like it and try to put that in, in your work. Hi. Sometimes it's okay. When you're starting out, it's really okay to just copy because then that's how you learn and that's how you um, get to practice drawing and creating. And that's also how you figure out if something you like. For example, when I started using paper, I didn't know that I will enjoy it that much. I just knew I liked paper, so I started working with paper. And the more I worked with it, the more I enjoyed it. So you really just have to try. <laughs> Thank you for that, teacher Eliza. So it really takes a lot of getting to know what you like, what you prefer, and really trying everything until you find what you like best when it comes to yes. illustrating. <laughs> so thank you children okay. for all the questions that you sent us. So now we're I going- to see people gutting. <laughs> yeah, so now we're going to start making our paper cut artwork. So we're going to make okay. my self-portrait mask and my book cover. So take a look at the chat okay. and make so sure I'm you have all the materials. To my cutting mask. Okay. Okay. There. Can you see? Can you see my paper? Sorry, uh, I I disconnected for a while. Oh, okay. that's all right. We're just about that's to okay. start the paper cutting. So, can you see my paper? So, what you need for the workshop would be different kinds of paper, different Sorry. colors. And we'll need scissors. Does everybody know how to use scissors? So very important when yeah. you're cutting with scissors is to cut away from your body and away from your fingers. You don't want blood on your paper and on the table, okay? <laughs> so first, I want you to choose the color of um, you want for your face. So. I got this um, flesh color, I think it's a bit yellow. And I want you to cut out the corners of the paper. So just trim until you get the, the shape that you like. 
So if you want it more round, then just cut, cut and cut. Okay. If you're, um, you can also make it round if you think your face looks more round than rectangular. So here I'm just trimming the corners of my paper. Okay. So everybody following? Is it okay if my paper is this short? That's okay. This one. I'm just making this big so you can see it. But if you, if your paper is not this big, then it's that's okay. Everybody have a head. So next we're going to make eyes. How many eyes do we have? <laughs> two, right? So if you need two pieces of uh, anything, you just fold your paper and then cut um, the shape that you need. So I'll cut the circle. And then because I folded it, I have two circles that are exactly the same size and shape. I think this is too big, so I'll um, cut it some more. Um, excuse me, Miss Liza. Yes. Uh, would it be all right if we play um a soft background music while we work? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You could also use do different shapes for the eyes. So, for example, you want your eyes to be um an oblong, so you can start with a rectangle. And then just cut out the corners of the rectangle. So if you look at my um, cut out, I could put the rectangle like this, or I could put the rectangle this way, or slanted, it will change how my face looks like. could also be smiling. So if you want smiling eyes, you can um, cut a curved line like this. Then cut another cur smaller curve under it. So I could have smiling eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. I could have sleeping eyes or I could have smiling eyes if I turn it over. My eyes would also be shaped like a leaf. So I could fold my paper again 
and then cut some a leaf shape for my eyes. And while everyone is cutting, feel free to ask questions or if something's not clear, you can speak up. So you can see with just simple shapes, I can make different expressions with my face. Next, you can do the nose. So I'll get a different color again for the nose. I think the simplest shape you can do for a nose would be just a rectangle like this one. Or it could be a triangle. If you don't like um, pointy um, shapes, you could cut out the corners. The nose could also be round. Oh, I guess that um, technique for cu um, cutting a circle. If you watch me, um, my, um, my scissors is just in the same place, but I'm rotating the paper so that it will curve and I can form a circle. This way you also don't um, get into an accident and cut yourself because your scissors are always facing away from you. So here. You can have a small round nose or a bigger round nose. I can have a triangle. It could also be a small curve again. Like what I did for one of the eyes. This is shaped like this is like a cheek scroll shape. So my nose can be like this, or it could be like this. So I've seen Sabi's and Kylie's work. So everything's looking great so far. So as you can see, it's really all about experimentation on how you want it to look like. And next, I think we could go to the mouth. Again, the very simplest way to make a mouth is just to have a rectangle. <laughs> or you could just curve the bottom part to make it smile. So if it's facing this way, then my face is smiling. If it's this way, it is kind of angry. So at this point, I think it would be fun for you to play around with your mouth, nose, and eyes. And see how much different your face looks when you move the things on the face just a little bit. Try to move the eyes up. Try to move the eyes down. Try to move the eyes farther apart from each other. And the expression of the character really changes. It's just that... Um, Adjust, um, small adjustment in the position of the the eyes or the mouth or the nose. Uh, 
Okay, so one. Does everybody have the parts of their face? No. Not yet. Okay. For those who are finished, and you played around with your eyes and nose and mouth already, and you're happy with where they are, you can get your glue and stick the pieces to the face. I'm going to use my um, glue stick. We're using the white glue, the Selmer's glue that, that's wet. You don't have to use very much to stick your paper so that your paper doesn't get too wet and crumple. If you're up finished with your work, you can show it to us if you'd like and then share how you made it. You can use the raise hand button if you want to show your work. And don't forget, you can try out different eye shapes, nose shapes, mouth, eyebrows. Uh, I see Santiago, you're raising your hand. You could also add ears. So if you want to add ears to your um, face, again, because you need two pieces, um, you fold the paper again. And then cut out a half circle, like a cave shape or letter, letter C. And I have two pieces that I could put here. I think it's too big. Let's move it some more. So another thing with paper is that you can um, keep adjusting your cutout. If it's too big, then just cut a little more. If you make a mistake, you can just do another little and cut another one. So a while ago, Santiago was showing his work. Can you tell us more about this, Santiago? Thank you. You get there. <laughs> oh, wow. <There. laughs> nice one, Santiago. Thank you for showing it to us. <laughs> we could also continue by adding hair <laughs> to your character. Right, I'll stick some um, the ears of my character first. So you can put blue. In Santiago, since you made your eyebrows really thick, uh, it gives your face a very strong character. Yes. So, a strong expression. So it looks super cool. <laughs> so 
Okay. So I have my the head, but no hair yet. For the hair, I think I want to use purple. So you could stick the hair behind the head. So for if I wanted my hair to be like this, look, it's already done. <laughs> <laughs> or I could stick the hair on top. Like this. So I'll use this as a guide for the size of the hair. But I'll put it behind the head and then just cut out the shape is a little bigger. And then to cut out this light shape like this. I think I could put it here. And then another one for this side. You could also use a pencil to uh, as a guide so you know how big to cut your paper. This is my other one. Okay. Sorry, JP, what was that? Can you this share with us? Other, this is my other work. Oh, what is it? It looks it's, it's, like... A, it's, a, it's a dog. Oh. I made a dog. Wait. And this is my other work. The, the one I'm working on now. I see. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's spotlight that. Uh, Nikki, can you spotlight JP's screen? And then JP, can you show us again? Can you show us your work, JP? Yeah. This is my. Now. This, this is the 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 character I'm working on now, and this is the dog I made. Nice. The, face isn't, the face isn't still clear. Okay. Thank you, JP, for sharing your work. Thank you, JP. You drew your, you cut out this with you know, very sharp angles. So it really looks you know, nice and chiseled the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think uh, everyone can have lots of fun with designing the hair. So I remember when I was a kid, I've always wanted to dye my hair at bangs, but it's not allowed by the school. <laughs> so you can <laughs> choose to be really expressive. I think I'll put a small ponytail in my character. I'll, I just cut out a, like a teardrop, which I could put here.
You could also add accessories to your hair. <laughs> Santiago, raise hand. Can I put my uh, hair bun on my, my hair? My yes. Yes, yes, you may. Or can I put eyelashes? Yes, of course. <laughs> Hi. Wow, thanks, Santiago. Wow. We see the we see it the mask that you made. <laughs> it's a really cool hairstyle. Like it's a you know, it's swab. It's a swab <laughs> cool hairstyle. Just like nice your hair. Yeah. I see uh, uh, Luisa. So thank you for showing us, Santiago. So there I see Luis's mass. Can you tell us more about? Can you share us your artwork? This is my friend. This is she's a fairy. Oh, okay. That's really cool. Oh, that's nice. I love the blush that you put. <laughs> <Yeah. in her laughs> <laughs> it's very fairy like and also your choice of hair. Yes, did you, the long did hair. You pick, did you pick that color specifically? Or... I have only yellow color. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, it's it's still the yellow hair makes the fairy look more magical. <laughs> Nice one. I love the mouth too, the little triangle. <laughs> looks like she's casting a nice spell on me. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think I should put the ponytail? Here on top or here at the bottom? <laughs> Uh, to all our participants in the room, uh, what do you think should teacher Liza put the ponytail on the top of the head or at the bottom? Here or here? Cute, Cute is on top. <laughs> what? <laughs> Savior said, uh, "What is cuter in his okay, we have <laughs> Teacher, look at this. Okay, okay Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Hi, I, we're yeah. going to spotlight. Yeah. Does everyone see Ryan's screen? Oh. So okay. can you turn can on share the video again? There. There. Can we nice. see? <laughs> wow, can you tell us more about it? That nice one, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you for sharing us, for showing it to us. I love how you use different colors for the nose and the ear purple and also the hair. Really makes it stand out. So as teacher Liza mentioned, you can put accessories. Uh, uh, one of us mentioned that she wanted to put eyelashes too. So remember everything that you want to put into your uh, into your work. It can also say something about you. Do. Like, <laughs> yeah. So eyelashes uh, makes it seem more feminine. Cat ears, nice. So Adrisha said that she's adding cat ears. So okay. that expresses her love for that. <laughs> so Santiago is raising his hand. 
Yes, Santiago. <laughs> okay. Do we have time to make the next one? Uh, it looks like it's already 521. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we might not have time for the next one already. But uh, perhaps in true life, you can. Like this. Yeah, you can uh, share a bit about it. Or we can figure out how we can share it at a later date. Okay. <laughs> Because from here, we're supposed to make a book cover if we're going to write a book about this character that you made. <laughs> oh, I see Kylie sharing. Oh. Hi. Are you a unicorn? Or is that a hat? A unicorn. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> Can you share us more about it? <laughs> And I see you also put a, what's the pink, is that a clip? The painting on her hair. Oh, so yes, there's a clip. And I like the placements of the mouth. It's like a fun smile that you made. So thank you, Kylie, for showing us your work. I really love the pink hair clip hairstyle. It looks cute with the bangs. <laughs> this is my work now. Yeah. So oh, I see it. I, I put in a hat. Oh yeah, we see the hat. <laughs> Do you always wear hats, my... JP? <laughs> not, not. I don't wear <laughs> Just sometimes. It looks good. The hat looks good on your mask. Thank you, JP, for showing us your work. I'm working on another one. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> you can make friends for... <laughs> The character, the mask that you made. Mm -hmm. Crystal? Uh, yes, Crystal raised her hand. This is the girl that I made. Wow. Oh. Can you tell us more about her? She looks like a happy she, girl. <laughs> she is very cheerful and happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely see that with the eyes. Can you show us again in the camera so we can all see better? Nice. Oh, yeah. and then what's that on her right side? That like the point? hair is long. Ooh. Oh, it's a very long hair. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> it kind of looks like Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I think the face shape that you chose really adds on to her happiness. Because it's big and oval. So we see here teacher Liza adding a flower accessory. Yes. Because my character likes flowers. <laughs> like nature.
a copy who who made put six on her character earlier. I think I'll put my on mine too. <laughs> I think Kylie, did you update you your Kylie? You're showing us your work. I think you updated it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spotlight that, and then Kylie can ah. turn on your audio and tell us about what you've added. Is that a flower? Like a pink flower to the moon and magic clothes. Oh, <laughs> nice. Cool. So your character oh, cool. is really leaning onto ano, the magical side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice one. Well, Sabi is showing us her work. Uh, I'll put you on spotlight. Then can you let us know? Oh, this. I'm Ali. I'm Ali. Sab. Sabi here on you. Sabi. We're on you. Like the bangs and the. Okay. <laughs> so the e- earrings. Oh, the earrings oh, look yeah. nice. Oh, you have earrings. Like, there. <laughs> yeah, there, there. there. So, so I added bangs because when I was still younger, I had bangs. I also added earrings. Because I also, I also wore earrings, and when I flipped this, I noticed it looked like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. I really love how large and expressive the earrings are. Yeah. Really adds a lot of uniqueness to your character. I to think of what else I could add to mine. Hmm. Isha is showing us her artwork. Oh, there. So, oh, Louise. Okay, let's do oh. Louise first, and then Sasha. Okay. This. Yes. Oh, there, Trisha. Can you tell us more about your work? I actually not at you. So it looks like, are those cat ears, Trisha? Yes, I like that the eyes are big and bright and it has um, eyelashes as their details. Yeah, is that like a small heart uh, near the eye at the cheek? Yeah, I just added that little thing. Oh, that's really cute. And I love the pink hair. <laughs> And also, I, I love the color for the lips. It, it makes your artwork really look, your character look very feminine. Yes. And it's As- also to the side. The smile is sweet. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, no, underlying all that sweetness, I see, I think of a uh, cheekiness that mm-hmm. your character is uh, playful. <laughs> Like a cat, like a playful cat, especially with her sugar pink hair. Yeah. So I Thank added you, the of orange hair for my character <laughs> to make her add something unique to her hair. <laughs> oh, nice highlights. <laughs> highlights, yes. <laughs> I think uh, Tan Louise a while ago I saw that she had updates to her character 
Would you like to show it again? I add, I add something. Oh, oh. what's that? Ah. <laughs> and a headband. A headband, okay. And an oh. ear. I think we could, we could stop the um, feeling on my screen so we could see everybody. Okay. Maybe stop the spotlight on my side. Okay. Right. okay. I think everybody is almost done. I'm doing the hair right now and it's almost time for this meeting to end. Oh no. Yes. That's all right. Yeah. So we're <laughs> extending just a few minutes. So let's line up again. So I think there are many of us who wants to share. I didn't, uh, I didn't get to share yet. I only did the face. I'm still doing the hair. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. So while you're doing that, let's have other people uh, share first. Uh, okay. Sorry, Tan Luis. Hello, uh, you, you keep getting cut off. So uh, remember, <laughs> let's all fall in line. I see Savior first. So, yeah. Uh, Luis, let's have you first and then Savior. Okay. Wait, you're on. Oh, you have a whole body. <laughs> it's a whole character. <laughs> In a... Can you and describe? I you use a sunflower um, pattern. <laughs> yeah, she is a fairy, but she has two have a one. Oh, very nice. I also noticed that your profile picture is a sunflower. So, do you is sunflowers your favorite? Yeah, it's, it's, it's make me happy and she has a eyelashes. Yeah, she does. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah. And she has a foot. A what? A foot? <laughs> Wait, you can zoom it That's out all okay. there. Oh, yes, it's a whole girl, not just a face. <laughs> and with arms. I only made the face. <laughs> and a flower for the hair. Okay. She <laughs> has a flower and she can make hair That looks really nice. And I love that you picked an, another color for the flower on her hair so it makes it stand out. Okay. Thanks, Dan Luis. Can we give maybe a congratulations emoticon or a virtual clap for her? <laughs> Xavier is also showing his work. I yes. like the eyes and the eyebrows with the pattern. <laughs> Xavier, can you tell us more about it? His name is Tim and he has a friend. I mean, king. Oh, he's a ah, king. Okay, he's wearing a crown. Yeah. Your turn. Your turn. Ooh. No, this is Cloud Bell. It's a fellow Cloud. I don't. I just made them because I thought we were making something else. Cool. I think it's can, really cool. Yeah. Can you put both your, I know, yeah. characters side by side? Are they friends yeah. or enemies? <laughs> Are they friends or enemies? <laughs> no. Enemies. <laughs> okay. friends, Are they enemies? Friends? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nice. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. For yeah, I agree with the teacher, Liza. The patterns really make it look you know, very unique.
All right, so we're about to wrap up. We'll give you five more minutes to finish your works. So while the others are still finishing up what they're doing, you can still share with us what you've made. Or if you have questions, you can so, still ask. I, I think guess. I can share. Oh, I okay. think I can okay. share. Wait, but uh, how Can't. exactly you can? I didn't uh, get to glue it all. So uh, all of the parts might be uh, flowing. Yeah, so like here, Ooh. I decided to try Ooh, this okay. style with mm -hmm. a point chin. Oh, wow, okay. So I'm trying to make one of uh, my original characters uh, uh -huh. that I made uh, in, with digital art. Mm -hmm. uh, Trisha said it looks like anime, your mask. Yes. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Especially with the, uh, how you made a cut out for the eye outline. Yes. Yeah. It kind of got the a hair. lot everywhere. Mm -hmm. Alright. So you can still continue working on it. So don't worry if you're not yet done. You can still finish your work or continue on with your work even when the workshop is done. So we have three more minutes. Okay, but uh, we'll just have another meeting. We'll just have another meeting. Uh, just you can send your a photo of your work to, to the meeting. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Santiago's raising his and I think he added something to his work. Okay. I added the ah, you had the hat. <laughs> Ooh. And the whole outfit. <laughs> Good horse. It looks so hat. nice. Uh, where is he going? I... Yeah. Where is your character going? <laughs> <laughs> Have you decided? My... Have you thought of him? Why is he all dressed up? <laughs> Ooh, can you share with us the bot the close up of the buttons? Because those are very cool patterns. What did you use for that? From the magazine. From the magazine. Ah, from the magazine. Okay. See, it's the nice combining different kinds of uh, paper for the cutout because it gives your Cut out more texture. Thank you. Thank and you. character more personality. Thank you for sharing, Santiago. The you. outfit looks really good. So let's just call on uh, um, maybe two more children and then we're about to finish up after we call out two more children. I see Trisha is raising her hand. So let me spotlight you. And update. And you also drew um, stands of hair. So that's true. Also adding highlights. Mm -hmm. I love the color combination. <laughs> the orange really goes with the pink. Okay, so I think our five minutes is up. So again, like. Like we said a while ago, don't worry if you're not yet done. You can still continue making your works after the workshop. And then uh, we'll also be emailing everyone instructions on how you can share your works with us. Share it online so other kids will also be inspired to make their own character using uh, paper cut just as teacher Liza showed us. Uh, perhaps we can get one more sharing from someone whom we haven't heard from yet uh, this afternoon. What if, Polana, uh, if you have any questions, uh, now is the time to ask Teacher Liza. And once we close the event, 
yeah, will be sharing, will be just be staying in the room, in the room for like a minute or two, just in case you have other questions you want to ask Teacher Liza or us uh, before we part Wait, our way. Wait, so yeah. how to how to add the other the other children's contacts? What's that? Oh, why is that the contact oh, on Zoom? Oh, all right. Uh, so, um, Nigella, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Okay. So Nigella is asking if it's all right with everyone that uh, we can share each other's contacts. So perhaps we can ah, add each okay. other. Um. So for that, on we'll Zoom. have to email uh, everyone's parents first to ask for permission, <laughs> and then okay. so because we want to protect everyone's you know, safety and privacy online. And once we get their answer, we'll share with everyone, so we can. Uh, you guys can also gather at your own time. Perhaps make a new whole new world uh, composed of all your characters. Teacher <laughs> uh, Alright. Can so, I what? <laughs> okay, thank you. Teacher Eliza, what's your favorite book? Then you draw? That's my favorite book that I draw is Drew is too much. <laughs> because oh. that's also the book that I also wrote. For some of the books, I work with a writer. But for Sumit, I did it all by myself. <laughs> okay, I... And it's the newest book, so that's my favorite. Okay. So thank you, Louise, for that question. So thank if you, you have questions, so you can ask them in a bit. So let's just wrap up our our session so we're we're really glad that a lot of you are eager to share your paper cut artworks but for now let's go on to the next part of our program i didn't know this was this big <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to the next part of our pro we're just going to leave you a bit of ideas to think about so you can think of it as a pabaon that will leave you. Or, ako na, may pabaon? Ashwin. Ashwin, teacher Eliza. Okay. So I have two pabaon. <laughs> Which I also mentioned earlier. So first, if you want to be really good in art, in drawing, you have to be very observant. So keep your eyes open and watch all the things around you for inspiration and also as reference so that when you're asked if you have to draw a, like a kalabaw you know how to draw a kalabaw and then my second pabaon is just try things out just like what you did earlier you don't have to know how to do everything right away just practice and try it out if it works then very good <laughs> if it doesn't work then try again but you'll only know if it will work or if you like it if you try it thank you. <laughs> so thank you for that teacher eliza and uh just a short sharing so i super agree with teacher eliza practice and experimentation it's very, very important. And going back to the book as well, uh, it really teaches us the importance of being kind and caring, of opening up and doing little generosities to all the lives we encounter, whether plant, whether animal, whether human. And it also um, reminds us to be loving and appreciating the world, the world all around us and the living things uh, that exist within us together at the same time. And that's one of the things that I think art helps us do. do. I agree. <laughs> so thank you for that also, Teacher Alex. So Teacher Eliza and Teacher Alex also said um, the things that I wanted to share with you or to leave you as well. Just keep on creating, keep on trying. Don't don't feel bad if something doesn't work. That just means that you're still doing your best and you're every step of the way, you're still learning. And always go back 
to the story of uh, ang malit na kalaba kung paano siya magalang at mabait sa mga sa mga tao na nakapaligid sa kanya who, with, with the people around you as well. So now, um, I'd like to give the floor to the museum's assistant director. Or before that, actually, I think Teacher Liza has some links to share with us. Um, yeah, so I'm here. So you could, if you want to see my work, you could visit my website or my Instagram page. If you want to chat with me on Instagram, you could also <laughs> message me at Liza Flowers. <laughs> And then if you want to see more works of other illustrators, you can go to ang-inc.org. So this is the group of illustrators for children. They're 30 years old this year. So much, much older than all of you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Teacher Liza. Now, we're really going to um, close the program, but don't worry if you still have questions, we'll leave the room open for you to ask them. So now I'd like to call can take on- take a picture? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, Paul. We can take a picture um, after we close, and then from that, we'll have okay. our class picture. Okay. So I'd mm -hmm. like to call the Museum's Assistant Director for Exhibitions and Programs. Um, Daniel Devela for the closing. Thank you, Nikki, for that uh, introduction. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today's uh, paper cutting workshop for kids. We've seen some really nice uh, and creative artworks today with really cool designs, and we would love to see more of them. Uh, look out for the emails from teachers Alec and Nikki with their instructions on how you can share with us your works. Uh, you can also share with us your creations by tagging the Metropolitan Museum of Manila in your posts on social media. Uh, thank you, Teacher Liza, for sharing with us your art-making process and for facilitating the workshop. Thank you for sharing us ang maliit na kalabaw. Thank you to our participants for actively joining all our activities this afternoon. Thank you for sharing your ideas, reactions, and of course, your creations. We hope you learned a lot from one another. To those who would like to receive an e-certificate, kindly fill up the evaluation form by going to the link you will see in your screen, chat box, or comment section. You can also capture the QR code uh, so you can go to the evaluation form. Older siblings or parents, you can help the, com the children complete it. Uh, your feedback will help us do better in our future events as we prepare for the reopening of the museum's new art spaces, uh, reopening in Bonifacio Global City. Thank you, everyone, and happy weekend. Please stay on for the class photo. Uh, and then I will turn you back over to uh, teachers Alec and Nikki. Oh, so thank you, Dan, for the closing remarks. So now let's um, hold on our, our mask and then we'll take a class photo of our works. So if you like, since it's a mask, you can, you can um, put it beside you or it's like your face. So it's up to you how you'd like to pose with it. All right. So, so ready? In three counts. Um, teacher Jasmine, is it okay if you take the screenshot? Okay. Okay, all right. Smile. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Smile, everyone. There. Okay. Uh, so, thank you, everyone. When we reopen, we hope to see you Thank all in you. person. We can do art in real life. Thank you! Tour the museum in real life. Art today! <laughs> I'm proud that this is my Thank you, Thank you, Ms. Liza. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye 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 Take care. Can leave.
Yes. Yes. <laughs> or if you want to ask something, you can also before leaving. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. So if you have oh, questions, bye, that's Jason. okay. Hi, Trisha. Do you want to ask something before you go? Oh, there. No, <laughs> no thanks. Yay. No. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Sayang, parang uh, na, ano, na over it underestimate yung time sayo. Oh, usually kasi okay. pag on the roll na sila. Ay, so, like, na. Na. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so okay. much teacher Liza. We'll okay, be you. in touch again for updates about yes. everything. Okay. So thank sige. you po. So, I'll leave also. <laughs> okay, it's a good one. Thank you for thank the you. generous sharing. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> We're done. Uh, my mind hurts. Nagilty naman ako ba? Dapat sumabay kayo. Sorry. Oh, it's hot. It's yung, hot. Yeah, yung table ko wala ng literal space. <laughs> Oo, oh, truth. Anyway. So congrats, guys. Congrats. For happy weekend. And happy then, weekend. Let's talk na lang ulit. Ah, I'm on leave again on Monday. Pero let's talk na lang din on Monday. <laughs> Um, since pa December na rin, and then we have to decide on things. Uh, Nikki, um, I want to ano kasi, um, give you more talking exposure to Miss Tina. <laughs> um, do you have time ba right now to at least update her about how everything uh, updates regarding oh, as a viper like we had a successful event the kids were so ah, cute parang, parang ganun lang say update Tapos, okay ano, yeah then Jasmine you can share one of the screenshots there para ano you get you get more ano exposure things or Miss Tina gets to talk to you more kasi we barely get to talk to Miss Tina so this is a good opportunity to ano para makampante siya in her future events mm. na She'll just let us <laughs> Okay. Sige, you know? sige. <laughs> sa anyway. Viber na lang, okay lang. Yes, Viber. Sige, sa group sige. chat natin. Uh-huh. So it's really more of ano, updates and also confidence building on her part mm. uh, for us. You know? Yeah. Anyway, sige. thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Yay. Bye. 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 Bye.